Ladies and gentlemen, the radio broadcast experience designed to keep your wallet in top condition. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. Talking Money. Talking Money. More money, more money, more money. And now entering the studio, your guru for fiscal fitness, Jeff Tarbell. Uh, good morning. How you doing? Good morning, everybody. Not in the studio this morning. We are uh, in the uh, right here in the showroom of the uh, Folsom Harley Davidson dealer, and uh, we're doing a little little charity event today. So how are you? And hope you're having a good morning. This is going to get um, progressively more packed down here as they get going this morning. So we invite you to if you're out out running around and you're in the area of, of Folsom, we're kind of right off uh, Auburn Folsom Road. You got the address here, Johnny? He's looking it up. Here it is. Give we'll, a second. We'll find it. We'll find it. We are. I know where we are. It's, nobody else knows where we are, right? We're kind of right near Blue Ravine and Auburn Folsom Road, so the Folsom Harley Davidson dealership. And um, what we're going to do today is gonna get a, lot, a lot of fun things as well. But if you are, if you got a bike and you want to go for a ride today, we are. Uh, they are holding a uh, charity toy drive today. So if you bring down a toy, we're going to take a, uh, a tour around. Uh, the Sacramento area, and then end up over at the Fireside Lanes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, Fireside yes. Lanes. They're in. I think that's off of uh, uh, Auburn or Old Auburn. Right. And the address here off of Auburn Folsom is 115 Woodmere Road. Okay, it's 115 Woodmere. Yep. So, um, do a couple things today. We're gonna do our normal gi- our normal quiz questions and giveaways. We've got some some Sierra Tahoe passes, which I think I think the next Saturday are we on the road to Sierra Tahoe also? We are. Yes. Oh, yeah. We must have, did they close the studio down? They just didn't give us our key back, or what? Are we just gonna, we're just going to keep saying we're on the road. <laughs> us out. We actually don't that's have. Okay, a, I can hang out at Harley Shops and Ski Resort. Yeah, that's, week. that's fine. So this is the plan for today, and we will have um, a couple of interviews for you today as well. But if you, uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you some incentive to come down here. So if you don't have a bike, but you have a toy, I will trade. Uh, how many we got there? Three, one, two, three. I got a couple Harley hats and a Harley T-shirt. So the first three people that come down with a toy and put it in the box down here for uh, for charity, I'll give you your choice of one of the hats or shirts here. You don't have to have a bike. You don't have to ride. You don't have to do anything. You just be in the area. Bring us a toy. Yep, unwrapped. Yeah, unwrapped toy. And we'll trade you some Harley gear. So I'm sure there's somebody on your Christmas list that go for a Harley hat. In fact, these are pretty nice. That one in the front. <laughs> I may have to go get into the toy real quick myself. Yeah, that's and nice. Donate that. So we'll do that. And then also, um, if you want to come down and join us for the ride, the ride starts at 11. But, I mean, they got a Santa Claus doing, down here doing pictures, a Harley Santa. And uh, they've got all kinds of giveaways and food and stuff out in the parking lot. It's going to fill up here over the next couple hours. The ride kicks off at 11, but events have already started out. So, again, we're at the uh, Folsom Harley-Davidson dealership, 115 Woodmere in Folsom. It's right off Auburn Folsom, kind of right before the light there at uh, Blue Ravine. So we invite you down, and the first three that come down and trade me out a gift, we'll give you some Harley stuff, and we'll talk about that more throughout the, the show today, and then we'll do our ride. And the nice thing about this ride is that all the toys that they're, that they're um, gathering, they gathered toys, I guess, over the last few weeks, they said that Sandy yeah. Hager's restaurant, different places, they were grabbing this stuff. So all that stuff is going to local charities. And um, one of the biggest charities is a group of kids on that Sayonara Drive, yes. which is if you're a local and you know where Sayonara Drive is, behind, kind of behind, over there by the uh, Sunrise Mall, um, certainly some children over there that could use uh, all the help they can get. And yeah. uh, they have some other charities as well, the Powerhouse Charity. So we'll talk about those, and all, all for a good cause. And uh, God knows that... Um, we can do a lot more to help our little kids, and I, I don't even I want to get into yesterday. I, I don't even. I've never been so physically sick, and I don't know. I, there's been a lot of shootings and I don't I, and things that have gone on, <laughs> and then to say that you get used to that is sick and also, but you don't get used to it. But you can, but yesterday just it was uh, an unbelievable event, and that's and I just don't know what else to say. And this is not a show to talk about it, but I. I can't tell you how, how hard felt, um, how, just how sick I am for all the parents and the families that were involved in that. So it was quite the mixed emotion day yesterday because certainly the day started off as bad as it could possibly be ever, and that will continue to be a story for a long time. But I tell you, for those of us that are, that are in Placer County and those of us that live within a football kick of the high school, and uh, I've got three daughters that go to Granite Bay High School, to watch that game last night um, on TV and watch – really a true underdog football team, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, go down to um, Southern California, down to Carson, and play uh, Long Beach Poly. And when you watched the, when I watched the 
event on, on TV, which is so cool to watch. You know, in high school football, my brother-in-law is looking at me good. Well, can you believe this is high school football? And it was like, <laughs> yeah. like watching college. But, I mean, you thought that Grand Bay was going down there to play USC. I yeah. mean, it was, it was just, you know, Long Beach Poly this, Long Beach Poly that. And, of course, Southern California homies doing the, the show. But to, to see that outcome at the very end was just such a huge, huge thrill. Uh, it was just phenomenal. And I, I, I'm a proud parent. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want to brag. But I know for a fact, if my two daughters had not been down, been down there on the dance team, that would they would not have won. I'm just saying, I, I don't want to pat my the girls on the back too much, but I'm sure they put them over. I'm what sure was they, that final score, Jeff? Uh, 21-20. Nice. And uh, yeah, Long Beach probably missed a missed an extra point attempt, and Granite Bay won. I mean, literally right at the last minute. And so, and they had a huge. They had, oh, I want to say three. Huge um, buses go down of, of people, kids, you know, and, and just fans. So they had a good, a good turnout. My hope was, and I, I see in the paper this morning it's been dashed, but my, there was been a lot of talk about that game, those finals moving up to Sac State. Right. Um, and I, I, as I read the article here, I, I guess the CIF, which is the, um, the state entity that runs the football championships, I guess they want that big wow factor of walking into a big giant stadium, which Sac State is, is nice. They've done a heck of a job there, but it's not – I mean, the Carson Stadium, if you've been to the Home Depot Center, they, I mean, they, they'll, hold, they'll hold motocrosses there and all kinds of yeah. stuff. It's a huge stadium. But is, is it a true wow factor when you walk into an empty, huge stadium? I mean, Sac State would have been sold out. I mean, that yeah. place, that oh, place would have been rocking sold out. So which, which is better, a little smaller stadium that's packed to the gills um, or, you know, this massive facility that's got, you know, it's the third full. I, I don't know. Maybe I don't, I'm not in charge of it, I guess. But I, uh, they thought they, but they're looking at Sac State, and that'd be cool. If they rotated it back and forth to bring the uh, championship, but uh, anyway, quite quite the day uh, of emotions, uh, positive and negative yesterday. But congratulations to everybody out there at the Granite Bay program because that was um, one hell of a win, and uh, they beat a real tough team. So that school down there, Cal- Long Beach Poly, has more NFL players in it than any other school. I think it was I think it was ranked the number one high school ever. Is that right? Yeah, I think a hundred years old. They had some phenomenal athletes, but wow. anyway, you can win. That's why they play the games, right? That's right. So uh, speaking of, speaking of football, I don't know where else to put this in, but I thought this is, was interesting. Uh, I was looking at money, duh, and I was looking at the national TV rights for football, and what a what an absolute swell! Just like you know, Southern California used to dominate high school football, and Northern California with Grant starting it off, and Del Oro and Folsom, and now Granite Bay, we're starting to see a, 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 certainly some respect come up this way. You're starting to see the dollars move toward the west coast in terms of college collegiate football too and i'll give you an example here the um this is uh average annual excuse me average annual revenue from national tv rights deals for the five biggest college football conferences now i i am not i mean i can pick a few college teams i don't follow college football a lot i don't know i know there's been a lot of shifting i know some schools have moved around so a lot of this could be in relation to that but i thought this was interesting so for example Previously, the the Big 12 Conference, which I don't know what schools are in the Big 12, so this is I, I apologize in advance, but the Big 12 Conference had the most money spent on advertising, about 80 million a year, um, and they, that went up to 192 million dollars. But look at the Pac-12, which I'm guessing, and I believe is all the West Coast. Your Oregon, I mean Oregon's a phenomenal. They were previously getting 57 million a year, and it is expected under the current deal they'll get 350 million dollars. In, 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 adver- in advertising, so uh, college football on the on the in the Pac-12 is going to get all the money, which means those schools will probably just get bigger and better uh, as time goes on. Because obviously, if your school is getting any portion of 350 million bucks, you could probably recruit a few kids that are uh, out of Long Beach Poly and maybe Definitely. a couple out of Granite Bay too. So I thought that was interesting. The big shift. Uh, almost everybody else kind of stayed, you know, stayed similar in terms of advertising. They were all in the right, right in the 200 million dollar range, except for the Pac-12, which went up a huge amount. So. We should see some very good football on the West Coast for years to come. I gotta keep, I keep, I'm used to, used to having a clock in front of me. I've got to keep my uh, keep my eye on the time here today, too. We are going to have a couple of guests come and speak to us a little bit about what, what's going on out here. I saw some just some some really positive positive news. I don't know if you're catching all this or, or not, but Zillow came out and ranked Sacramento the number three in the nation on a list of a uh, seller's market. Uh-huh. I said seller market. I didn't say buyer's market. Right. <laughs> so um, remember, buyers, when it's a seller's market, that means things are good for them. <laughs> Maybe not, not as good for you as they were. And 
so that's that is a I mean in all top three were in California the, the two were in the Bay Area yeah and in the three in, in Zillow it's so rapidly changed it has and and I'm trying to figure out okay wh- what has changed um, is it just the the attitude the perception I mean certainly when it's when it's a seller's market I think it's a, a, a it's a little bit of a false seller's market only from the and the standpoint that we don't have a lot of stuff to sell and and you still have to be able to get a price to pay off what you owe and so it's, i don't want to lead the false expectations you walk out and get anything you want for your house because right. you cannot and it still has to appraise and that's that is the hard part but it is a it is finally some good news for our i mean everything has been so sucky for so many years that it's uh it's nice to get some some good news but i i've been telling clients of mine for for months now if not all year particularly those that weren't actively in the market you know they weren't thinking about buying or selling maybe they just happened to come in and do a refinance and they, and they said well we're you know we're kind of thinking about you know should we sell but the market's not so great and you know, maybe we'll hold it and rent it a little bit and i look at them and i said well you you know back up the market is phenomenal if you can afford to sell yeah now it's not it's not a 2005 market you're not going to get the same price and if you are upside down you're still upside down but for those of you that have ever had thoughts of you know maybe it's time to sell um, w- within reason and within the right price range your house will go very quickly very quickly in fact I I caution people be pl- be prepared that you're gonna have to probably go rent yeah. sell your house and go rent somewhere because it's it is unlikely if not damn near impossible that you're gonna find the house you want sell yours and, and move on and very get, get very it, difficult to get you want and get you what you want I mean, even you look at the, the scenario my wife and I went through even though we did find a house that happened to be vacant the reason it was vacant is, you know, in our opinion, needed a bunch of work. So we had to move out anyway and go fix it. So there, you know, I think you have to plan on some some tweener stage. Yeah, otherwise you just create a huge stress that you don't need. Yeah, it's, it, it, I mean, it, does, it doesn't work. It, well, it, <laughs> I, there, and those of us that have been in the real, real estate or the mortgage business for years, you know, can remember, I, I can remember to this day having, you know, my transaction or as a lender being a transaction somewhere in the line of about five deep. And it doesn't necessarily mean I was number one on the transaction, but you know, one other transaction had to go, so our client's transaction could go, and ours had to go, so that could go, and that another one had to go. And I remember being there was one that was there were five in a row. Right. You know, if in any anyone along the line that tumbled on the five, it was going to ruin. And you you think about five house transactions all based, you know, all closing basically simultaneously or in the same. That is a enormous financial implication but the stress level is yeah yeah, that's a good point i mean how many years ago was that and you think now if if we could just get more inventory more to sell and and the market continues this way you know when will we see that again where you can actually place a contingent offer it's going to be a while well long time i i i contend like we said a couple weeks ago john i said you know if i mean and i said it tongue-in-cheek kind of but you know should we quote unquote prevent you know mass house buying from investors because all of those houses you know there was a great a great um diagram in the sacramento b that had you know it was basically the map of of the two or three counties in a row you know and it had all these stars of all these houses that one entity one entity, entity had bought and there was was it 500 was it 500 homes 500 homes and i'm looking at months. i'm looking at that map and i'm going oh my god i mean you know elk grove and citrus heights and antelope and in north natomas and you know in auburn and roseville and in rancho cordova and i'm like these are exactly the areas and exactly the prices houses that all of our buyers are looking for yes and so we had we artificially had one entity kind of suck up a lot of the a lot of the um the inventory yeah, i would say our company alone probably has 500 pre-approved first-time home buyers yeah i would imagine i would imagine yeah. so we'll talk about that some more too we're going to take a, a quick break here real quick uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do. So we are down here at the Folsom Harley Davidson dealership. It's a 115 Woodmere, right off Auburn Folsom Road in Folsom. Uh, we'll be here. We'll be here till 11, till the ride kicks off. We're on the air till 10. But if you come up during the show, and you bring us a toy, an unwrapped toy down here, even if you're not on the ride, don't even don't even own a bike, bring us a toy. The first three people that come down, we'll trade you out a Harley Davidson T-shirt or hat, and you can put your unwrapped toy in the bin, and we'll take it down to some uh, very excited and uh, children worthy of of your gift. So. Um, Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break. This is Talking Money. My name is Jeff Tarbell. That's John Fodorero. Our number here in the studio, if you want to give us a call, 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. You can text us if you uh, You know what? I didn't bring my text machine. You cannot text us at 441140, <laughs> but you can call us at 339-1140. We're going to take a quick break. 
This is Talking Money, John Farrero, Jeff Tarbell. We're going to be right back, Jack. We're back. It's talking money with Jeff Tarbell. Uh, good intro there, with a little Tesla. We are uh, here at Folsom Harley Davidson, 115 Woodmere, uh, right off Auburn Folsom, in the city town area of Folsom. Doesn't feel like we're really in Folsom. I feel like we're on the edge of Folsom, but we're in Folsom. We're in Folsom. We are um, doing all kinds of fun stuff today. If you want to give us a call, you can do that at 339-1140. Our text is not going to work because I walked off and left my remote text machine at the house. Packing, uh, packing the Harley's a little different yeah, than packing the truck, huh? That's it. So I had a little, little less stuff today, too. Um, and here's our here's our deal for you. We are doing a uh, charity toy ride. Uh, Ryan is here. Gonna, Ryan's going to jump in from the Higher Purpose, the the Event Foundation. Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing good. Good. So we are. Uh, we got a couple couple ideas for you. If you are not a rider, but you just want to come down and drop off a toy, I'll trade you a, a cool Harley Davidson either hat or shirt, and trade you for a uh, unwrapped toy, you can drop it off. You don't even need to have a bike. You just need to have – you actually can walk here if you want. I don't care how you get here. <laughs> However you can bring the toy, that's fine. And then we are uh, – there's a, a ride starting at 11. And where are we going, Ryan? We are going to go down uh, Folsom Crossing, and we're going to go to uh, Fireside Lanes. We're going to go down Sayonara. Yep which is one of the organizations we help as a result of this ride. We put out a bunch of boxes so that we could get toys for them because they're, they're having their event today. So we're going to ride down there on the way, and then the rest of the toys are going to go to Powerhouse Ministries. Okay. And, and I, I let Ryan jump in there a little bit. So Ryan, is Ryan Flo, Flo, Flanor, did I pronounce that right? Ryan Flanor. After I butchered it a couple times there. Higher Purpose, the Event Foundation. So I, I, I tease as we came in there with a little Tesla music because – I am familiar with your organization through the Jeff Keith ride. That is correct. Jeff is the uh, lead singer of Tesla. So you've been doing this a little bit, but it sounds like you guys uh, have, have taken this to maybe to the to the higher level, if you will. Yes, that's what we're. That's our attempt. So what is uh, what does your group do year round? And because it's not just at Christmas anymore for you guys. Right. So um, we have just been doing uh, motorcycle rides, but we are going to do other events so we decided to start the foundation so that we can help more people so we are going to um do um a concert event where we have uh, the board decided to do a couple different events we're gonna so you can go to higherpurposeevents.com and see the upcoming events that we have planned for in the future so it's not, it's not. I mean, today is obvious. We're gonna we're gonna get some toys together and drop them off to some needy kids. But you mentioned before the show even started, this isn't just about raising toys for kids. This could be for uh, I- adults and all kinds of sorts of purposes. So that's really what you guys are are doing through your through your I'm gonna, your ministry of uh, and I use that term in quotes, but your ministry of, of of raising money and raising awareness for different en- entities. Yes, that is correct. We talked about um, sex trafficking and homeless. Um, we'll bring those different things. The Jeff Keith ride for reason is for foster kids right now, Okay. but the reason could be anything. And we want to continue to help the foster kids, but we could add more sure. as we grow. Sure. So. And, and using a guy like Jeff, who's, who's a local guy and, and, and world famous, you know, is, is, is a great way to get, get some, get some advice going. So today the, the primary beneficiaries of the I'm familiar with Sayonara Drive. But is but you mentioned almost like it's a, like it's an entity. So is there is there a group there that? It's a community center. Um, Gladys uh, runs that over there. Okay. And she it's a, a community center for after school kids. Okay. To, in that area, they just built a new community center over there for her. She used to be in the fourplexes on Sayonara. Yeah. Sayonara is basically the worst street in citrus heights and they've been cleaning it up the city of citrus heights has been putting money into it and they built a park and a community center for her to help uh her do what she's been doing for for i don't know exactly how many years but yeah and i have and obviously if you're and i grew up was born and raised here it's not one of those streets that you go down just every day you know it's a street that you frankly you flat ass avoid you know you have in the past so i haven't been down there in a long time so i'm glad to hear that, they, that they're taking some some steps to clean it up and so so anyway that groups will get will get some of the donations today and then you mentioned on the other side that we're going to go to fi- end up at the fireside 
Fire, fire, Steve Cook's Fireside Lanes. Okay. And then uh, there's bowling for a dollar. Everybody that brings a toy um, can bowl for a dollar. There's karaoke. Um, the shoe rental is a dollar, 20% off food, and two dollar domestic beers if you drink and uh, have uh, fun over there and i could get at least four dollars worth down yeah there you go <laughs> okay very good well ryan so ryan's entity ryan i appreciate your time i know you got a lot of things going on here and i won't i won't tell you up too much higherpurposeevents.com that's correct and if you have some desire so what i like about ryan is that the guys here at Folsom harley they run a motorcycle shop they don't run events so you can call Ryan and their group and say, hey, look, I, I'd like to do something with our business or our event, and I'd like, I have an idea that I'd like to do, and these guys will help you run it. I mean, that's just what, what's happening here at Harley. The Harley guys know how to sell bikes. They know how to run events as a, as a purpose. So people could call you and if they have their own ideas and do their own events. Is that right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, Ryan, uh, is it higher purpose, uh, higherpurposeevents.com? Ryan, I appreciate it very much, and we'll see you out there a little bit. Anything else you want to jump in on? Or? Uh, yeah, I just yeah. want to um, thank all the sponsors that sure. uh, helped us out. Um, Fulsome Harley-Davidson, um, you know, did a lot in this. Uh, Golden State, uh, Heath Santi Photography, Herrera Drywall. Um, the Muscle Machine Calendar Girls. Yeah, that's right. Um, I forgot I forgot about that because they, they will be here in a little bit if they're not here already. And we are giving away some signed calendars today for they're, the Muscle Machine They're putting group. their snow gear on. Oh, they are? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 34 degrees this morning. It was. It was a little cold on the ride now here. Um, Perfecto Lounge, Performance Chevrolet, Proven Insurance, r l Builders, um, RockHardLive.com, Sammy Hagar's Island Bar and Grill, Steve Cook Fireside Lanes, Thunder Road, V Dog Cycle, uh, Extreme Cycle of Sacramento, and um, Cycle Shade and Paradise Signs Graphics. I really, really thank you for all our sponsors to help us put this together and provide these toys and and do this event for these kids. Awesome. We're looking forward to it. Yeah. Appreciate it very much. All right, we'll thank you. We'll talk a little bit later on. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. That was Ryan from higherpurposeevents.com, so you can check out their site for other things that are coming up. And uh, maybe you or your group want to have him uh, help you guys put something together. That would be awesome. They can do that, too. So, John, we didn't give out any quiz questions yet, so we can do that. And we still have a couple hats and a T-shirt here, so if you're out in the area running around you want to bring us a toy, trade us for some Harley stuff, we can do that. And the ride kicks off at, at 11 o'clock. So but go ahead, John. We'll throw out – we got a uh, – some Sierra Tahoe ski passes or uh, some gym boys. Yeah, and get the, this right. the snow has came. We oh, have some yes. Snow. There's some more coming. It'll be so, continuing uh, the snow. And we will um, take two winners on this, Nate, down there. So go ahead. So, yeah, a uh, little bit of news going on. You know, we're down here having some fun at Folsom Harley-Davidson. But also in, in big news, the U.S. has just, um, they're going to get a settlement from HSBC. One of the largest ever. Like a like, like, like $100,000 fine, something like that? Well, let's just say in the past history, Barclays had a $298 million, Lloyd's $350 million, Credit Suisse $536 million. This is going to be the largest payout for uh, expected. H- HSBC is expected to emit money laundering Ooh. lapses as part of a huge settlement. How much is that settlement? And, and what's interesting here is that when you, when you get the answer, so, so most of us would say, okay, do I want to pay that or do I want to just not do business in the United States anymore? So it tells you how much how much you make by doing business in the United States because I guess their choice could be could say, hey, forget you guys. I ain't paying the, f- the fee. I'll just won't do business in the U.S. anymore. Absolutely. And uh, that uh, apparently wasn't an option. So they were money laundering. And I think was it was it Iranian or was it Iranian to say or was it, they, I'm not sure they even say in the article what they were laundering. But basically uh, – yeah, multiple U.S. agencies. Um, yeah, so it wasn't it's good. It's a big mess. So how much is HSBC, the um, bank, going to pay the U.S. government as a fine? It'll be the largest fine ever. We'll take, take the first that are you know close or fairly right on it, 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. You can text the answer. Nate's down. He can look at the answer down there at 44-1140. And we'll let that go. And we're going to come back. We're going to take one more quick break. Let's see what, yeah, we'll do that. We'll come back with one last segment, and I got a lot of little. Uh, I got something. If you've got any kids under 18 years old, or you are under 18 years old, you might want to tune back in after I come back. I got some interesting numbers for you. Or actually, maybe you don't want to tune back in. <laughs> might scare you. Sometimes not knowing is better than knowing. 339 1140 if you want to jump in. And uh, this is Talk of Money. We are live at Folsom Harley Davidson, 115 Woodmere. We're giving away uh, some Harley Davidson gear if you come down with an unwrapped toy and come see us before the show is over. 
This is Talking Money. My name is Jeff Tarbell. That's John Fartoraro, and he's going to be right back. And here we go again. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. We are uh, in our final segment of the day, but the day is just getting started. It's going to be a long day for me. <laughs> Lots we, going on today. We got uh, got the toy ride today. It starts off at 11, so we are at Folsom Harley-Davidson down here at 115 Woodmere, right off Auburn Folsom. So uh, we still got a couple uh, prizes yet. If you come down and drop in a toy, and um, you can pick up a hat or a T-shirt from John here in front of him. Otherwise, he's going to walk off with that hat. You know, he's got his hand on one of them, so you, you got to hurry. <laughs> And uh, we did get a quiz, a quiz. Our quiz question was: Was it HSBC paid a record fine? U.S. penalty of how, what was the answer? One point nine billion dollars. One point. So you have to screw up really bad for yes. a one point. <laughs> yes, one point nine billion dollar fine. So, and, and you know, the government's doing. So if they get that one point nine billion, check out this. Now that sounds like a lot, and that is a lot. But last um, time I checked, it was quite a bit. Yeah, it was. I when I, I look on my bank statement, and I was just a bit shy of one point nine dollars. <laughs> so I was just, just coming in a bit under, just a bit under there. So uh, look at this, John. So the Treasury this week also decided to sell off the rest of their AIG sta- uh, shares, and that netted them a pricey, a little uh, positive return of fifteen point one billion dollars. So wow. you put that together, fifteen or six to seventeen billion bucks. That'll almost fund the government for an hour. Yeah, between exactly. the two. So actually, the, <laughs> that's I think, scary. We, we are better off just, uh, I, I think our government is better off on bailing out companies. And Of course, this doesn't list all the companies that we bailed out and didn't get our money back from, but that's, this is a positive day. We're talking positive stories only. So f- for $15 billion here, $1.9 billion there, next thing you know, you're almost talking about real money. Almost. So you, you almost buy this guy's hat over here. Is that, dude, that is, the, that is the craziest. I want that helmet. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Although if I came home with that helmet on, my family would run and my dog would eat me. But that thing is crazy. I don't even know what that is. We'll have to get a picture of that before. We'll put that on the website. Well, yes, we'll post that. I do have one more quiz question. Speaking of of billions of dollars, so there's another big number in your hand there. It is a big number. Nine billion dollars. So what, Nine what is our, billion dollar what is our quiz question there? 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. So we'll so, go ahead. Yeah, the question is who wins a $9 billion prize for uh, getting a little slice of new airwaves? Yeah, it really wasn't a prize. What they got, what they got awarded was... Bandwidth, basically, within yeah. the, the ability to to broadcast or you know their signal within a certain bandwidth, and, and that's highly, highly valuable. So, just being awarded that bandwidth by the U.S. government, it was worth about nine billion dollars. This company. Now, it's not like they just walked in, like John and I just walked in and said, "Hey, dude, could we have some bandwidth?" They spent billions of dollars getting themselves that company build up, ready to go. So, but but effectively, they it's worth about a nine billion dollar decision for them. So, what company? This week was awarded basically bandwidth to use for their broadcast, and that is about a nine billion dollar value increase for them. I think they're smiling today. That is not a bad week. No, not a bad week. I had a week where I almost made nine billion once, but I woke <laughs> up. Hey, I, I mentioned before when we're just flying through the show here today, so I got to keep an eye on my clock here. Uh, a couple things I noted, three things I noted this week. Uh, one of them is if you are interested in living up in Yuba County. So Yuba City, Marysville, anywhere up there. So, no, Yuba City could be Sutter County, so you got to be careful there. It's the Yuba County side. Uh, Yuba County has had a very difficult time giving away 60000 bucks. They have a maximum loan of $60,000 they'll give to first-time homebuyers as very similar to some of the other programs where they'll give it to you as a silent second. So let's say, for example, you qualified for a $115,000 house. Think about it. You could buy a $175,000 home through the Yuba County grant. There is no repayment requirement, as I'm reading it here. Um, so it's a it's a phenomenal program, and they can't give the money away. So it just goes shows it goes to show you how hard it is to find a home. Yeah. But I'm saying right now, and I'm not I'm not in Yuba County at the moment, but the difference between a hundred and fifteen thousand dollar house and a hundred and seventy five thousand dollar house quite a bit is is difference between golden gold and not gold. <laughs> so uh, if you are looking in the in the Yuba County area, uh, your income has to be, you know, depending on your family size, a family of four has to be, has to be under about 48 grand a year. So, but to check it out, you can go to uh, Yuba County's website. I thought that was interesting. Uh, I did note in today's paper that the um, keepyourhomecalifornia.org group 
has not been giving away as much money as they thought, and they're worried that if the fiscal cliff issue comes around next year that they will not be able to keep doing that program. And if you're not familiar with that, so you're, everybody's heard of the HARP program, and we do a lot of them, you know, if you can refinance if you're upside down. But a lot of people don't fall into HARP, or they don't qualify if they lost their job or some, there's some other issue going on. So Keep Your Home California has some pretty cool things that they'll do for you. It's keepyourhomecalifornia.org. Yeah. So on their website, what do, you, what, do you, like, what do they do? So if you can't catch up on your payments, if yeah. you can't afford your payments, um, a lot of different items just to help you stay in that home. Uh, if you can no longer stay in the home for whatever reasons, there's transitional items, there's transitional assistance programs, yeah, they'll uh, there's even, some I unemployment need, mortgage assistance programs. They'll even give you some money. I thought I had read one time that if your bank if your bank was willing to take like a little bit of a sh- payoff down, they'll give you some money to help increase the yes, pay down. That's correct. So there's there's anyway there's some funds available, and I didn't get the full story, but I think it is tied to some other funding that could go away if the fiscal cliff issue comes around. So if you haven't if you're not familiar with that. Yeah, and so you, you, you've, you've looked into refinancing the guy, you know, and they've said, hey, you don't qualify because you lost your job or, you know, things. You know, you might check them out. Yeah, if you're challenged right now, you can actually reach them also at 888-954-KEEP, K-E-E-P, keep your home. California.org. So there you go. Check them out and uh, while well, they still have some funds available. I mentioned there if you have a, a, a child who's under 18 or you are somebody who's under 18 listening to the show, if you're under the 18 and you're listening to the show right now, you are a genius. Yes. Or you're going to be permanently screwed up for the rest of your life. But either way, most geniuses are, you have a little bit of a screw loose. Um, so so I, I came across this week, what, what I wanted to do, so, so probably five or six times a year, I teach a, a high school class at various high schools. Most of them are in Placer County, but I've done some in Sacramento as well. And, uh, in fact, John and gonna, we're going to go do one on Tuesday at Granite Bay. And I teach a class about mortgage and credit. And the reason I teach it to high school kids is because I don't want them to make the same mistakes that their parents and grandparents have made over the years. And I figure if I can get them early enough and I can get them educated enough, at least some of these concepts might stick. And plus, it's fun, and it's fun for them, too, to take a break off. So this, this class I'm teaching this week, I wanted to do something a little different. I was, without being political, I wanted to, to make it very clear that decisions that our politicians make, and it means all politicians, it doesn't mean any one side or the other, and it doesn't mean this and this particular administration, it means friggin' all of them. They all kick the can down the road. Well, there's a cost to that. And I came across, what I was trying to figure out is what, what is the cost per individual that we all collectively owe the U.S. government, the, basically China right now, for our U.S. debt. We're running $1.9 trillion deficit right now. And I came across an article about a, about a gentleman who wrote, he, he, he minimized it down to just kids under 18. And, and the logic was, Hey, your grandma ain't going to pay this bill. Right. She'll be the, dead. What's the effect on the kids? Your parents probably won't pay this bill because they're the ones that are harping for more money and, and things right now. So it's really going to come down to the, the kids that aren't even in the workforce right now already owe the money. So here it's a staggering number. So let me give you some examples of how much. And by the way, this goes up $54 a day. And $54 a day doesn't sound like much, but how much is $54 a day over a year? Almost twenty grand. Times every kid. Yeah. Yeah. So this goes up. So you, so my, my, my IOU is already out of date because I put plus $54 a day. So, for example, right now, the four years at a private college, hundred thirty grand. That's a lot of money. Medium price existing home for our 18-year-olds, 173000 bucks. U.S. debt per American kid under 18 years old. Okay, right now. Take all our debt. I have three kids. So I get multiplied this times three. Each child born yesterday... Or turning 18 today, each child from zero or one day to 18 years old owes us, because you and I spent all the money, so we're now put the bill on our kids, $218,676 plus $54 a day. Will that be cash or credit? Oh, no, we're not doing credit. That'll be cash or That'll cash. That'll be cash or cash. So what I'm going to do on our class on Tuesday, John's going to help me because it's a huge class, is we're going to walk around and make each child student, I should say, they're not child, children, some of them are, each student sign an IOU for $218,000, $676 plus $54 a day, and they're going to take that home, and they're going to have to get one heck of a good job, because by the time they get out of college, it's going to be $20,000 a year more. So think about that, and I predict that 
So you're 18, you're 18 year old or now coming out of high school, you got four, you got, so let's say there's six or seven years away from actually Make earning a living. Yeah. yeah. So then they'll owe another 120,000. So they're going to be very, very close to 400 grand they're going to owe in debt. I predict that there will be one enormous revolt uh, by young people against the establishment, against their parents, against government, against taxes, against... I mean, you you got to get to the point where um, we, we talk about, you know, people with certain income who... I, I, and I know people who make large amounts of money, and when it nets out, they make a they bring home, some, in some cases, less than 50% of what they made. Right. And I know a number of them have just said, you know what, it, it just isn't worth it. I'm not going to go out and risk it anymore. I'm not going to go out and, and beat my head against the wall. I'm not going to do all this so I can make 48 cents on the dollar. I'm just not going to do it. So, And I have a feeling that, that these young kids are going to say the same thing, that the tax burden on them is going to be so great. And I mean, you're already $400,000 in the hole for the U.S. debt, and you haven't even started yet. They're going to look around and say, no way. I ain't yeah. paying it. And then what do we got? We got a bunch of retirees and people that are that are that are on stipulated services, you know, mandates. And and, and what got me thinking about this was watching that the uh, right to work issue in Michigan. And you had the you had the unions out there, and they were, I mean, screaming and fighting. And, I, and who knows whether whether some of them were actors or unions? I don't know who they were. But I looked at that and I saw that kind of that mass of people fighting for what they believe is theirs. And that's fine. You should show up and fight for what you believe in. But I thought, can you imagine that on a national scale when eventually we have to say uh, all of you aren't getting Social Security anymore or you're not getting Medicare, or you're not going to get food stamps, you're not going to get this stuff. It'll be like Greece, and it'll be a, 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 it'll be a national meltdown. Yeah. And these 18-year-old kids, are, when they're meltdown, working, revolt. They're, they're not going to want to pay the bill, and I don't blame them. So anyway, that's just, uh, something you might think about. I routed this around as uh, I got a, an amazing amount of return just from people that this all this all this all some people posted it on facebook so there you go um please have more kids because we can we can and, that, and that's the other that is another problem we're having is we're not having as many kids right as we used Look to where japan is right now yeah so we, we got to get some more we either got to get some more immigrants here legally or we got to get some more kids so um now the world of course this is all contention the world doesn't go to doesn't, doesn't the world come to an end on Friday anyway, the 21st? Is that the Every other month it comes to an end. Yeah, I know. I wish someone, some would just, wish someone would just pick a natural end date and we could just go by that. that right. Be, you know, because this, but if you keep telling me I'm going to die and then, okay, forget it. I was just kidding. It'll be next Friday. And, you know, this is driving me nuts. Let's pick yeah. a date. Let's, let's stick with it. You know, have some, have some balls out there. Let's go. That's stick with right. the date and, and make, make it happen. Let's, so Let's do this. So I guess if, if, if we all die next Friday, it won't matter and we won't owe the 218, then... I, I, I guess we're good. Yeah, we're we're, we're skiing Saturday. We want to move that up to Thursday. We can go Monday, Tuesday. And there you go. Okay, yeah. So I'm, if, <laughs> if I'm going down in flames, I'm going down on my on my skis, which is normally how I end up on my head anyway. <laughs> um, a couple of little things last, and, and then we got to. How are we doing on time down there, Nate? I'm, I'm looking. Oh, geez. okay. There There's you go. All kinds of time. Well, then I'll do my. Oh, four total. No, you said two, Nate. It's, Two to the music, and then we go to two. So two and two is four. Now we're getting we're getting into high math here. This is the kind of stuff that will throw me off for a little bit. Did you two see this? Did you see this? Speaking of, of uh, we're not we're not having enough kids. The uh, this business is in total crisis, and I'm only kidding a little bit. But the uh, the Got Milk campaign is really having some um, people just aren't drinking milk anymore. What's I know. Go, what's I saw that. With, what's happening with milk? What they do wrong? You milk cheese anything anymore well we don't we don't know about cheese cheese is like crack we don't supposed yeah, to do that's the why cheese. we like it so much <laughs> that's right <laughs> but you got to do the uh milk sales in 2012 and this is this is interesting because um i don't know if it's just because of your age it must just be because of your age because i'm certainly when i was younger i drank, I drank a, a ton of milk yeah. but the average milk consumption you want to guess how many people in 1975 how many gallons per um per person people drank of milk in one year as an average per capita, a hundred. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I said milk, not beer. A <laughs> hundred. This is my, now my story is going to be crap. Isn't the, nothing I say now is going to sound good to you? Hundred. <laughs> hey, Nate, back up the tape a little bit. We're gonna we're gonna replay that section. It's a big number. Day. I think you meant five. <laughs> it's a big number day. <laughs> 
1.9 billion, 9 million. Uh, Come 100. on now. I'm not asking you any more questions. <laughs> so 28.6 gallons per person was the average milk consumption in 1975. Think about it, 28 gallons of milk through the year. So that's that is now down to right at 20 gallons of milk wow. per individual and going down even less. And, and the biggest category is this you know, skim and non-fat milk, but the milk industry is worried. So you start seeing a little bit more of the um, soy milk they're coming out with now, you know, not coming out with, but they're trying to promote that, flavored milk and just other milkshakes and those kind of things. They're trying to get more milk sales. But milk, the milk industry, is they're panicked. It's just not a staple like it used to be. Well, if you have a d- dwindling supply of kids as one, I think that there's a belief that maybe it's not, as healthy as it should be. I'm not sure that's true. But I, I do think, wasn't it Kirk Hamilton told us milk? we don't need as much milk for, for our bones as we thought we did? Correct. What does he know? He wrote a book. I wrote a book one time. I really like cheese. <laughs> it is, that, that, that whole show has ruined both of us. Now. In I fact, know. It, uh, <laughs> Every time I eat anything. I know. Like, uh. so you have to have the cheese on it. I'll, I'll even text John. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going straight to hell. I had cheese on my, on my, <laughs> I had cheese on my Jim Boy's taco today. So that, that music means we got to wrap it up here. I did see this. This was pretty cool. Um, so Nike, you heard of them? Yes. L- little uh, shoestring company there. Small company. Small company in Oregon. Nike, Nike basically went to the city, to the state of Oregon and said, hey, we love you guys, but we're leaving. No if you don't, If you don't give us a 40-year tax deal, basically give us a tax a tax incentive I'm or guessing reduction. they're not coming to California. I don't think so. Uh, Nike said they'll invest $150 million in the state, create over 500 jobs. But you got to keep our taxes where they were. And um, so the, the governor called a special session of the legislature just to deal with Nike. I would, too. Yeah, Absolutely. No kidding. I wonder how that works. In California, we won't even call lunch if someone thinks about leaving. So, uh, <laughs> anywho, that is it. Hey, we're down here at Folsom Harley-Davidson, 115 Woodmere. And uh, bring a toy. Come on down if you have a bike or you don't have a bike. It doesn't matter. We're collecting toys, and we're going to go on the ride. So uh, we'll see you down here. That music means we got to go. There's, there's Ryan back to work, so um, we'll catch up with you on the road. Look out for us. We'll be on the, around the su- Sunrise and the Cyanor Drive and heading out to the Fireside Lanes, and you can bring a toy out there if you want also. We'll, we'll arrive at Fireside about what time, you think? 12 o'clock. Uh, 12 o'clock? Between 12 and 2. Between 12 and 2 we'll be out there. That's it for us. You can find us on uh, Facebook. The show is um, put up there. You can catch it after the uh, show is over, and we'll catch a rebroadcast. We'll see you next week, everybody. Be, be cool. We'll be up at uh, Sierra Tahoe. Aloha. Good morning.